It's 2015. Your full face wearing boyfriend has been dead for months. You're mourning him so hard that you've manifested his spirit. But before you can do that one scene from Ghost, Scarecrow releases his new vape flavor and all the eight year old kids are freaking out. It's up to man to stop him and his windowless fun van that kidnaps everyone Batman has ever known. Jesus, everyone gets kidnapped in this game like it's ridiculous. Traverse the world's most moist city, meeting old and new faces, sometimes both. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. In this final chapter to the Arkham series, I'm Guy in the Tie, and you thought I was horny for Harley? Wait until you see what the devs did with her new model. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> so plug in your game scent and trip on some grade A fear toxin as we take a look at Batman Arkham Knight. Okay, we made it, guys. This is the final Arkham game in our retrospective. Woo! Thank you so much for following me on this journey. I can't believe when we started off, we had 50 subs and now we're here. It's crazy. If you're new and this is the first video you've seen of mine, please check out my other videos on why the other Arkham games were that good. Be sure to leave a like and comment. So Arkham Knight had a rough launch, but mainly on PC, it was very poorly optimized back then. Thankfully, a lot has changed over the years and it's actually a much more pleasant experience to play. But after Batman Arkham Origins, equally rough launch, the helm is passed back to Rocksteady for the next title in the series. And honestly, how do you match what was so greatly improved upon in Arkham City? How do you push the envelope further? Well, let's see, I guess you could add a far longer running time, double the amount of supervillains, not settle for a small section of Gotham, but do the entire goddamn thing. Add way more playable characters like Robin, Nightwing, Harley, Batgirl, Red Hood, Catwoman, even the Joker. What? Okay, Rocksteady, that's a lot more than Arkham City. Surely that's enough. Well, how about more cosmetics? Ugh, more Riddler trophies. More challenge maps. More Joker. More jiggle physics. The Batmobile. Alfred. Way more gadgets. So much side content that it dwarfs the main story. Did I already say jiggle physics? Dope ass suit. <whistles> Tighter combat. Far more downloadable content. God damn, Rocksteady sure know how to add more to their games. But... Just like with City, even with all this extra content and six years of experience making these games, why does it feel like it vastly fails to the first title from a studio that had no experience back in 2009? Now, don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic title and the gameplay is almost perfection, but something's missing, right? How does a title have so much content and so many new elements added, but still end up being a less enjoyable game? But I'll tell you what, let's find out if Batman Arkham Knight was really that good. And the best place to start is the story. <laughs> but before we dive into the story, I just want to say if at any point in this video you think, you know what, this Thai guy is actually not that bad. Uh, please support the channel by leaving a like and hitting the subscribe button. I, it feels so generic asking you to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but it does really help out and like myself, I forget to hit the button when I like a content creator. So yeah, just throwing it out there. Anyway, into the story. So the Joker has been dead for about nine months and honestly Gotham is doing pretty well. Makes you think about how much time and effort could have been saved back in Asylum. And that's not the only thing that could have been saved at Asylum. We follow a cop to a diner because of course we do. It's America. You know what? Just once I'd love to see a British opener where you walk into a pub and be up the first person that looks at your bird funny. You are so the cop heads over to this guy sitting at the diner and tells him to stop vaping, but he's not. He's actually working for Scarecrow and I haven't seen anything confirming this, but I think this is anarchy going by the hoodie and A symbol in the table, right? Anyway, he's rocking that new fear toxin. And just as we go up to talk to him, shit gets wild. Here, Excuse me, sir. There's no smoking in here. Actually, you know what? I take it back. This is pretty accurate to a British pub on a Saturday night. The new fear toxin is working out pretty great. Unfortunately, so is my gun. I, wait, 
I started blasting. Bow, bow, bow. This was just a small amount of Scarecrow's new toxin. And unfortunately, he brought enough to share with the rest of the class. So Gotham is just evacuated instantly. Leaving the city to all the criminals and supervillains, as well as a scantily cladded therapist wet dream. Batman. We head into Gotham to try and get this place under control, and like all the previous games in the series, this is going to be a long night. <laughs> Actually, writ night. <laughs> All right, I need to take a moment to talk about how goddamn good Gotham looks this time around. Though I miss the Christmas theme from Origins, this constant rain and how extra everything looks in Gotham this time around is actually pretty good. Even the water has no feel, it's just constantly pissed off. It's a very moist looking game. Anyway, we head over to Gordon, and yes, he's still not renewed that gym membership. Again, I writ Jim. Like, <laughs> only I read this. Why am I trying to be funny in the script? Also, it sounds like he's been taking up Scarecrow's vapes because he sounds far more gravelier than Batman this time around. You still know how to make an entrance. How's the evacuation going? Last bus crossed the city limits an hour ago. I'm just glad my little girl got out when she did. Look, man, I love Jonathan Banks in Breaking Bad playing Frank. Such a good character, and to be honest, he does work as Gordon on so many levels, but he does sound a bit bored, right? Especially with the last few games having him sound a little bit less smoke a 20 pack a day. It just feels a little bit alien having the voice change this much. Anyway, Gordon tells Batman that they're pretty much up against it and they need to find Scarecrow. Unfortunately, finding him will be like looking for a pin in a haystack. Get it? Because <laughs> he's a scarecrow. Instead, we find Poison Ivy, who isn't so happy playing bait for Scarecrow. And lucky for us, he decides to give us another little taster of his new fear toxin. No! 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 Also, I love this scene with Ivy. It's such a shame that his vile toxin has no effect on me. Nature always wins. Will he ever learn? <sighs> You're coming with me. You only had to ask. We save her and throw her into the Batmobile. I love the Batmobile. I remember not liking the Batmobile the first time around, but this time around is actually pretty good fun. Decked out with cannons and machine guns that I really hope fire rubber bullets. And before you ask, you can run over people, but they don't die. They just get heavily electrocuted. Let's just hope no one had a pacemaker. You can even control this bad boy remotely for some pretty awesome puzzles and fights. Enigma makes the most out of this feature, to be honest. On the flip side, unfortunately, the tank fights are a little undercooked. You will always find yourself just waiting for them to attack. The game throws a few different tanks at you to fight, but honestly, the only difference is the amount they shoot. The most fun I had with this was just trying to get a combo up without getting hit. The game makes a big deal about upgrading the Batmobile throughout the game, but it doesn't really feel like it does much. The main upgrade I would say go for is with the Batsuit. As with the eject function and the new suit being able to handle more Gs, it can send you flying for miles and honestly it is the best way to travel Gotham. It feels so good. I find it odd that something so heavily pushed in the lead up to release is so underwhelming. I mean, I'm glad it's here and it does add a bit of fun to the gameplay that's not just beat em up sections and stealth sections, although the Batmobile gets its own stealth sections, which is okay. <laughs> It's harmless. I, I won't say it ruins or makes the game. It's just something that's there and I appreciate it. Like I said, I really enjoyed playing around with the Batmobile, but once you upgrade the eject function, you kind of don't need to use it anymore and it becomes a bit obsolete. So that's what I mean by it being a bit undercooked. The novelty wears off pretty quickly. And also, I'm curious, did anyone else use the aim function to do sharp turns? Because I found this way easier than the drift. Let me know in the comments. We get Ivy to the GCPD building and we throw her into a cell. Barbara Gordon tells us that Scarecrow is doing shenanigans at Ace Chemicals, which upsets Batman because, I mean, we're still mourning. Also, Barbara, love you, hon, but why the fuck are you still in the city? 
like on your own in the clock tower surely we should get you to the bat cave or something whatever i mean what's the worst that can happen right before we head to the chemical plant we branch off to acquire the new bat suit and my god this is a game changer so we get the new version 8 bat suit and i'm gonna be honest it's a bit op the gameplay in arkham knight is the exact same we've come to love in these games except now the stealth is optional thanks to the new suit we have far more speed and can move a lot more fluidly which means we can now do these fear takedowns. You can take down up to about five thugs back to back. Though this is loud, you can always just grab out of sight and get away. It's not an issue. The only caveat is you have to do one or two-ish stealth takedowns to refill this fear meter. And then you can take out five thugs, no issue, as long as they're within sight. It looks really cool, but it takes away from the thought process of these stealth sections. I loved Arkham Asylum because every stealth section was this massive puzzle and it was so easy that things could go wrong. Here, there's so many ways to take out a thug without being caught. And even if you get caught, there's a hundred ways to get out of a fight that there's just no need for stealth anymore. It's gone more from an action stealth game to just action. They've also nerfed the silent takedowns. You can't do a double takedown like in previous titles now, and I have no idea why. They even place thugs like before, where you would just assume you could do a double takedown. It's so odd. They've also removed the 10 times combo speed boost thing that they've had in the last couple of games since City. I think this was a smart move. It did seem a bit out of character, to be honest. We have the same bad guys we deal with from the other games, but we have a new class called Medics. These guys suck. <laughs> they can res down thugs during a fight and later they gain the ability to make them go sparking like a DBZ character. The only way you can deal with these is with the back claw because for some reason that doesn't electrocute you. I, I don't know why. Though frustrating, it does add a bit more complexity to the beat-em-ups and these are still fantastic to play. It, honestly, if this was not fun to do, the game would be dead to me. The fight sections are so good. It's the only reason you really go back to these games, to be honest. All right, now we've got that all out of the way, we head to the chemical plant and meet a new big bad chat GPT man. This is what happens when you use AI to do everything. No, this stranger goes by Arkham Knight. Yeah, you thought the game was about this guy. No, oh, no, that's this guy. Uh. His design's pretty cool. We save a few workers and just vengeance diff Arkham Knight before heading to confront Scarecrow. trained on him. If he even looks like he's planning to leave that room, open fire. Oh, and avoid the bat symbol. It's a, uh, it's a little trick. It's where his armor's the strongest. Aim for the weak spots at the shoulders first, then coordinate fire at the points where the plates meet. Please! You say something? Leave him out of this. Always defending the weak and the helpless. That's what I like about you. Predictable! The Arkham Knight, whether you worked it out who he actually is or, or not at the start, he's just a weak bad guy. All he wants to do is kill Batman all night, but is constantly cock-blocked by Scarecrow, who wants to give Batman just a little, a little spook first. Talk about playing with your food, bro. Anyway, speaking of a spook, Scarecrow is trying to set up a bomb to spread his toxin across Gotham. We catch up and confront him, but unfortunately keeping our best Overwatch character on the front lines wasn't such a good idea, you know? Get out of there, now. Relax, no one knows I'm here. Batman allows Scarecrow enough time to escape and kind of leave Batman to die in this explosion. Fortunately, we can minimize the damage, but it does mean that Batman has to sacrifice himself in the controlled blast. Alfred's not too happy about this, but we say our goodbyes, the music is so good. This game's music's amazing. Anyway, Batman is huffing that scarecrow toxin like it's some of that good weed. And speaking of highly addictive green stimulants. Miss me. <laughs> the Joker appears. And he's just as horny as ever. Oh, don't act all surprised, Bats. 
You knew this was going to happen sooner or later. Me stuck deep inside you. Hey, yo, what the fuck? It seems even agonizing death doesn't kill this man's hard on for Batman. So, yes, no secret, Joker's back. And just like the Joker, Hamill was back in the voiceover booth. And it's such a pleasure to hear him and Kevin Conroy going at it again. And that's a good thing because, man, the Joker has a lot to say in this game. This must be the most lines written and read by a dead character because the Joker is constantly on one this time around. So why is the Joker here? Well, let's break it down. To be fair, it's not just the fear toxin. Granted, that is playing a big part here. But you remember when Joker gave Batman some of that sweet, sweet J-juice in Arkham City? Well, even though we cured it of the Titan that was killing us, we're still infected with the chemicals that was pumping around Joker's body at the time. You know, the stuff that made Joker the Joker. What that blood is doing is slowly turning us into the Joker. And that reality is amplified by the fear toxin because that's Batman's greatest fear is becoming his own boyfriend. <laughs> so no, this isn't actually the Joker. He is dead, guys. But it's Batman's mind hallucinating him. And the quips and dialogue he has is what Batman assumes the Joker would say if he was in fact haunting him at this point. All the knowledge that this Joker spouts off is stuff that Batman already knows or assumes. There's no ghost of Joker. There's no, oh, the Joker's alive inside him. It's just Batman. Let's just let's get that out there. <laughs> anyway, after Arkham City, Batman rounded up anyone who was infected by the blood, and he's been trying to cure them for months to avoid another clown prince stealing the show. And he's doing this because of one of these guys, Henry, who's infected but not showing symptoms. Henry Adams. He's been infected the longest, but he's symptomless. Immune to Joker's blood. I've got Robin running tests to find out why. The last cell in the lineup is for Batman himself, because he knows it's only a matter of time before the Joker blood takes over without a cure. Also, no joke, this jump scare with Batman got me. Like, it got me way more than it should have. Random time for a flashback, but back to present day with Batman and the explosion, hallucinating Joker. I love this system in the game. It is genius. Not only can they just throw Joker at us whenever we want for some good dialogue, but they use him as like a subtle hint system. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. Now, I remember back when Arkham Knight first launched, people were a bit upset that the Joker was a massive part again. I don't know. Maybe people got bored of him being the major big bad. I don't know. To me, these Arkham games have all been about Batman and Joker. That's the whole point. We see the start of their relationship. We see where it's going. I mean, come on, guys. They've shared bodily fluids. We're, we're, we're well beyond just friends at this point. I guess maybe a part of it was Mark Hamill saying that he's not doing the Joker anymore. So we just assumed, you know, now that he's dead in the city, that's it. But I like that this was all a ploy. This was just a big haha gotcha moment because he was recording for this and he'd done a massive amount of script work for this game. And they did learn from Origin's mistake. There was nothing about the Joker up until the launch of Arkham Knight. It was heavily focused on the Batmobile and the Arkham Knight. Nothing about the Joker. So when he pops up here, it's actually pretty amazing. And I love the attention to detail that the first time we see this hallucination is at Ace Chemicals, where the Joker was born. Now, he starts off with all the lesions and skin issues he had at the end of Arkham City before he died. But if you've got a keen eye for detail, you'll notice that throughout the game, his skincare routine gets a bit better. He starts to clear up. I like to think this is a subtle way for the game to tell us that the Joker's getting more powerful and starting to take over Batman. It's something I did not notice my first time playing this game, so it's good to see. Though the Joker can be fucking dark sometimes. Dear Lord. Lockdown clock tower. Authorization. That bad. About it. How did Scarecrow know to go after your IT department? I mean, I had no idea she worked for you when I shot her. I just got lucky. Seriously, I was aiming for her head. Speaking of Barbara, she's captured by the Arkham Knight and Gordon blames Batman. This is all your fault. I will find her.
While searching for Barbara, we meet up with Nightwing and we interrogate the Penguin, who tells us Simon Stagg has been working on something with Scarecrow called the Cloudburst. Once we do this, this opens up a side mission where we can hang out with Nightwing and go after Penguin's caches and... Oh boy, I guess we need to deal with the side missions. So you know back in Batman Arkham City, I said that I wanted the side missions to have more integration to the main plot. And I praised Arkham Origins for doing this somewhat. Well, Arkham Knight decides to go the complete opposite and not only have it have nothing to do with the overarching plot, but there's so much side content that I feel like it dwarfs the main story. Now, that would be fine in an RPG, but in a single player action game? Dear Lord. So to start off, the side missions of Knight would be continuing to destroy Penguin's gun caches with Nightwing. This ends in a big brawl, though. We do get a few nice moments with these two showing their relationship a bit more. I'm proud of you, Dick. Are you feeling okay? This is the end. This is the last time we meet. Don't talk like that. All right, this won't stop you. Nothing stops you. Keep Bloodhaven safe. Promise me. It's okay, Bruce. I get it. You just don't want me hanging around, stealing the limelight. Dick. I won't let you down. I know. Next is Creature of the Night. Randomly while exploring Gotham, we'll get this Mobius looking motherfucker jump scare. We do a bit of investigating and find out this is Dr. Kirk who was trying to cure deafness through combining his DNA with a vampire bat's DNA. Sure, what's the worst that can happen? Well, he turns into a giant man bat and kills his wife. Good job, bud. I mean, I guess you could say deafness is the last of her issues now. You have to listen out for his cry while you're exploring Gotham. And when you find him, you inject him twice with a cure and done. Okay. Pretty undercooked. Speaking of undercooked, Firefly, who's back for some reason, is setting fires to buildings in Gotham. We chase him and that's it. And he's captured. Um, I mean, these sections are cool. Like, going through Gotham at high speed is pretty fun, but I didn't need to do this several times. All right, next is Hush, I guess. He makes his return. You remember him from Arkham City? Had quite a bit of a build-up. Well, he infiltrates Wayne Tower, and we do one counter, and he's done. What? Uh, uh, okay. My face! I mean, we get a cool section where we play as him. You think you're playing as Bruce. That was like two minutes. Um, okay. Uh, two faces, Robin Banks, and we stop him. Huh. You get to play around in some challenging stealth sections. But like I said before, with Batman's full kit, these are kind of a joke and very easy to get through. Ezreal returns. Remember him? He was the cryptic guy. He wants to take up the cow. And we give him a bunch of trials. And then we get a choice to either kill Batman or not. Okay. Not much there either okay there's also two missions where you have to find kidnapped firefighters or strung up dead people while exploring gotham there's no waypoints so you have to really listen to like fug chatter and music cues to find these it can be a bit frustrating one of them leads to professor pike for a fight which is pretty cool uh and the other one leads to a firefight chief who just admits he was making the fires to keep the team in business All right that one was a bit weak deacon blackfires in this game for all of 10 seconds I'm sorry if I'm coming off overly negative on these side missions, but like with Blackfire, what was the point? If your side mission doesn't take more time than it takes me to piss, it shouldn't be in the game. I'm sorry. This is like Black Mask and Arkham City all over again. They're just here to say we have this villain. We have this many people in the game and it boils down to nothing. All right. So my favorite out of the base game most wanted missions would actually be the Riddlers. Enigma actually having his own story rather than just spreading millions of trophies around Gotham for me to not collect because fuck that. He also actually kidnapped Catwoman and we have to deal with some puzzles and races to get keys to free her from an explosive collar around her neck. Pretty interesting and after you do a few of these he opens up areas in the orphanage where Selina's kept to do a teamwork puzzle with her and Batman and some of these could be real head scratchers. It's actually good fun. 
We also get fights with his Enigma bots that change colors so only that hero can defeat them, which again makes the combat more of a puzzle, which I like. It's very Riddler. I wish he had more stuff like this in the games. Though with it being the Riddler, there has to be a downside. And it's his boss fight, honestly. It's really good. I enjoyed up until the point he blue balls you, saying, okay, if you want to continue this fight, you have to go collect all my trophies and riddles and then we'll fight. This is beneath me. You are beneath me. You want to finish this detective, then you must earn the privilege. Solve every last riddle in this city and I'll fight you, Batman, but not a moment before. Or we could just leave you down there, Eddie. Like, what the fuck, man? I was almost there. <laughs> I was so close. This was almost a perfect side mission and they just they had to lock it behind a 100% save file. That's all of the base game stuff for the side content, but Rocksteady did release some extra most wanted missions as DLC that open up throughout the main game, which I've got. And a few of you in the comments of the origin video said to make sure I have this on because there's some cool ones. And you were right, the first one got me really excited as it's the Mad Hatter. And he doesn't disappoint. After saving some cops that he's captured, we get hypnotized and he makes us fight on this book. We fight in chapters of Arkham Asylum, City, and then Night. It's a shame that Origins doesn't get a mention here. The entire time he's looking down on you and you're in this like cell shaded style. It's really cool. It's a nice little fight section. I, I like the creative freedom they have for this guy. Next is Mr. Freeze. He wants us to go save Nora because all he ever wants us to do. But we actually do it this time and take her out of her ice pod and she's actually alive again. Cool. Freeze fails to stop a bomb on his ship though and it blows up and sets Gotham into an ice age. Again, this is really cool. I like how much they change Gotham in this game. Victor, do you read me? Batman. Graphically, it's really good. It's one of the best looking games I've played. We throw Nora into the Batmobile and we go off and fight a bunch of militia and they head off into the sunset. And even though Freeze definitely killed loads of people, Batman just lets him go to go die with his wife. He's a romantic at heart. Unfortunately, you can't join them. I can't leave until I've stopped the Arkham Knight and Scarecrow. Next up is Killer Croc's mission on a crashed Iron Heights prison. It turns out the warden was actually forming experiments on Killer Croc by cutting off parts of his body and having him regrow, thinking he could use this on humans. Unfortunately, this causes Killer Croc to evolve and he becomes so swole like Jesus, Gordon could take note. We have a big fight and once defeated, we arrest him and move on to the last of these extra missions. And that's the League of Assassins. You see, they're in Gotham and there's a bit of a civil war going on. Half of the League want to revive Rachel Gould because, I mean, they always do. And the other half is headed by Nysa. Nisa, Nyasa? Talia's sister. <laughs> and she just wants to leave Gotham. She's done with all this bullshit, which I like. We hear both sides and we have to make a decision. Do we want to save Raish Al Ghul, who will just go back to his old ways, but first he'll kill Talia's sister? Or do we destroy the machine, keeping him alive and let him die naturally and hopefully permanently this time? It's weird to have a mission that gives you a choice like this. And we know it's not really going to affect anything later on because there's no more Arkham games. But I feel like this opens up a whole argument of like if turning off the machine, keeping someone alive is technically murder. I mean, that's far too deep for my monkey brain. I'm just going to stick with this guy constantly ruins my day. So I'm going to pull the plug. <laughs> Jesus, that's a rundown of all the side missions other than some like standard take out the malicious stuff that pops up throughout the game. Most of your playtime is in these missions. So for someone like me who hates just having stuff thrown at him rather than it branching off from the main plot, it, it felt so much like busy work and none of it goes anywhere. Even the choices don't amount to anything because we all know this is the last game in the series. I know I'm not the majority for this. People just like to have stuff to do and maybe it's part of my fault for playing this all back to back, but it feels weak, man. When it comes to Batman the Arkham Knight, the side missions are the main to this meal. And the story is more of a side dish. It feels backwards. Okay, with that done, let's get back to the story. We catch up with this Simon Stagg on an airship. Unfortunately, we lose control and hallucinate the Joker, showing that he's got a bit of a tighter grip on our psyche at the moment. For Gordon, I think we both know she's probably dead, don't we, Bats?
We work through and we catch up with Scarecrow and have a 50-50 shot here that I'm pretty sure we can't win. Nope. Bad luck, bats. <laughs> And we get hit with more toxin. This gives our Joker side far more control. Look at me! I'm amazing! And this body! I can't believe how strong it is! Don't hurt me! Get up and fight! Come on, finish him. Finish him. Finish him. Look at him. Look at him. Better than that. To the point when even Scarecrow is a bit unsure what's going on here, we start beating down thugs far more brutally, showing that Batman's morals are kind of going out of the window here. Though this is a big misstep from my point of view. It would have been so cool to see Kevin Conroy trying his best Mark Hamill Joker impersonation, you know? Instead, we get this Mark Hamill dub over Batman, and it's just weird to hear, man. Scarecrow escapes again, but sends a message to Batman revealing that Barbara is in the same safe house where we freed Ivy at the start of the game. Batman heads there straight away, but unfortunately, as soon as we get there, Barbara gets dosed with some of that sweet, sweet fear toxin. What was happening? Barbara! Yes, you see it now. The horror no. behind the glass. No. The monster that will be your end. Unless you pick up that gun and deny him. No. Don't listen! Barbara, it's me! Your friend! You won't get me! I won't let you get me! You will bring death to all who follow you. Dear Lord, you can really tell this is the end of the series. Batman and Alfred are devastated, but we can't mourn as... You know, Scarecrow is looking to use the Cloudburst to spread this shit everywhere. I mean, he's got a one-track mind. We enlist Ivy's help to awaken the Great Deku Tree underneath Gotham to, I guess, filter out the toxin in the city. I mean, this seems kind of out of character to me for Poison Ivy. The toxin doesn't really have a negative effect on the plants. So why is she helping us? My only guess is that she's just really pissed off that Scarecrow used her as bait at the start of the game. But the only reason she got involved is because she wanted to be part of the group wanting to kill Batman. So it's really weird to me. Anyway, while that's going on, we find out that Harley has decided to attack the movie studio where we're quarantining the Joker wannabes. We head over there and Harley is rocking a new look and it's, um, well, hi. <laughs> We don't tell Robin about Barbara because of course we don't. And we start collecting our little Joker family. We have a few boss fights. These are like the only boss fights we get in the game. That's not side mission content, by the way. So enjoy them. We do get a fantastic music number from the Joker while Robin's trying to disarm some bombs. I'm sucking your head and I'm laughing. I feel you with dread and I can't stop laughing. Your parents are dead and I can't stop laughing. What else can I do? No encore. It's pretty good. We do start hallucinating about Jason Todd. Pretty fucking random, but okay. And how the Joker tortured and killed him off. Excellent. Of course you do. Did you get that, Bats? Kid's not yours anymore. He's mine. Mine, mine, mine. To do with as I wish. Hey. I never asked. What's the big secret? Who is the big bad bat? His name. Tell me. Of course, sir. It's... Never could stand a tattletale. That's why I like to work alone. No one to spoil the punchline. 
You should try it sometime. After all, you've seen what happens when you drag your friends into this crazy little game of ours. I'm sure this won't come back into play later on. I also love after these little moments where you're reminiscing about your favorite lost son and your new one walks up and Batman <laughs> literally gets his name wrong. No, no, please, please, no, no. <laughs> Everything okay? You look spooked. I'm fine, Jason. Tim. You haven't done that for a while. <laughs> That's fucking deep, man. And also, Batman and Robin seem really surprised that Harley was able to break into their base of operations. The whole time, there's a Riddler trophy in the main room. Like, obviously, it's not that hard to break in here, guys. We goad Harley into a fight and deal with her very quickly, which, I mean, is the standard for our character. At least we don't have to worry about hurting the baby. And whichever developer sat down and put jiggle physics on her ass thank you <laughs> unfortunately the twist is henry was in fact not immune and has gone full-blown joker just as harley gets used to the thought of some of that henry loving he takes himself out there's a lot of self-taking out here i feel like batman doesn't have to do anything tonight everyone's just taking themselves off the board Henry does this because he can tell Batman is also infected and slowly turning. And he knows that he would be the ultimate Joker, so removes himself from play. Harley isn't too happy about this. Robin seeing this too says that Batman needs to lock himself away. Robin will take over the night. Batman's just too dangerous. So we do the opposite and lock Robin up. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Uno reverse card. Now that Robin's completely angry and upset us, now's the best time to tell him Barbara Gordon is dead. Tim, there's something you need to know. Something's happened. No, not her. Don't say it. Barbara's... She's dead. I'm sorry. Let me out. I can't. They're targeting everyone close to me. I won't let them get you as well. Bruce, please. I have to do this. No. You son of a bitch! How dare you! You don't get to decide! Get away from me! Go! Jesus Christ. We get back out into the sea and Scarecrow sets off the cloudburst and envelops Gotham in a fear toxin. This looks dope. Again, the graphics in this game are absolutely amazing. I know this game had massive technical issues back at the launch on PC, but it's great to see that uh, it, it just looks good. It, it's so fun to play. Batman and Poison Ivy work together to stop this piss-stained cloud. We head underground to find more tree roots to help Ivy and have another encounter with the night. Cornered you. Now no one else could. All these years, all your enemies. But none of them understands you like I do. You think Crane found Oracle on his own? I'm the one who told him about Barbara. Me! I told you I knew everything about you, didn't I? Don't worry, Bruce. I kept some secrets to myself. Who kills off my favorite character in the game? Okay, I've had enough. He has been pissing me off all game. We go to Arkham Knight for revenge now. Who are you? You really have no idea. Do you, Bruce? Jason. But you're dead. The Jason Todd reveal is is okay. I, again, just like with Origins, I wish it wasn't so heavily pushed throughout the story. The pushing of Todd's death at the movie studio is 100% a smoking gun. You know that's coming into play. That comes out of nowhere, so it has to lead to Sun. The boss fight is nothing much either, and as I said earlier, there isn't really any boss fights in the main story. Most of those are focused on the side missions, which is okay, but again, it's the same issue I had with Arkham City where they're just so random. They don't play into the plot other than Penguin, really. There's not much main story here other than Scarecrow wants to make people spooked and Arkham Knight is upset at Batman. That's it. That's all we deal with all game. Anyway, after defeating Todd, we tell him we'll kiss the boo-boos and make it all better. He leaves. Speaking of leaves, Ivy unfortunately doesn't- I can't. I can't have that in. 
That's so stupid. Ivy unfortunately doesn't pass the booth and inhales too much of the toxin, just fucking dies. There's so much death in this game. Nature always wins. She ends on a moral high. It's nice to see, but it still feels a little bit out of character. So Ivy doesn't feel so good, Mr. Stark. And Gotham saved yet again. And now we get some nice little plant spores floating around. It's, it's nice. Yay. Anyway, hard cut. Gordon has tracked down Scarecrow. So we go to meet him and hopefully finish this fight. But Gordon's seeming a little sus. And proceeds to betray us because of course he does. And at the same time, Barbara's actually alive. Jesus, okay. What is going on? <laughs> what the fuck? I feel like the developers took way too many liberties with this fear toxin. They can just write shit in whenever they want <laughs> and take shit out. Thankfully, before we can digest what the fuck is going on, Gordon shoots us in the chest and we fall off the roof. You think Scarecrow will be happy, but he's actually pissed because he wanted to scare Batman, not kill him. Okay, so he makes Barbara do her best Joker impersonation from Origins by throwing her off the rooftop. But no, Gordon knew that Batman would survive, shot him in the chest so he'll be fine, and we save Barbara Gordon. Lucius Fox sends a spare Batmobile, which is pretty nice. I like that it's not painted yet. We take Barbara back to the GCPD building, and it's just in time for us to get attacked by Scarecrow's militia. Funny side note, if you die in this section, well, let's just say it unlocks the bad ending. While we were dealing with the assault on GCPD, Scarecrow kidnapped Robin because, oh my god, everyone gets kidnapped in this game. Oracle, Gordon, Robin, Nightwing, Catwoman, Jesus, these guys cannot function without Batman. That's not to mention the hundreds of firefighters, the workers, like, I, there's so much kidnapping. You know what, Gotham? Not a place to raise your kids. Anyway, the only way to rescue both Gordon and Robin is by turning ourselves over to Joker. Doing this takes us back to where it all started, at Arkham Asylum. But not before Batman has one final I miss my parents scene because, of course, Bruce, you couldn't go one game without it. Joker does what he's been doing the whole game and he's talking shit while this beautiful moment's happening. And I'm guessing this is just where Batman has had enough. He has heard a lot of crap from Joker, but once it's about his parents, Batman snaps. Never quite got over it now, did he? Well, there's no point crying over spilled blood. <laughs> it's time to move on, kiddo. Let go. Take a load off. Join your parents. Uncle Jay will take it from here. And Lucy, baby, don't worry your pointy little head. And actually goes and takes Joker's life. Regardless of this being a hallucination or not, he was pushed to the point of killing someone. Apparently this is what the Joker wanted and might have opened the door to full control. Anyway, back to Arkham Asylum. Like at this game wants to remind me that Arkham Asylum is my favorite. <laughs> so, Scarecrow's plan. His plan was literally just to unmask and hit Batman with his fear toxin. That's it. There was really no need to unload his fear toxin on a city, which, by the way, he allowed evacuation for. There was no real reason to get the knight involved because he just wanted to kill the Batman, and Scarecrow didn't. This plot does not warrant a 22 and a half hour campaign. I am sorry. Even Asylum's plot was more in depth than this, and that was just haha, Choker takes over the Asylum. Woohoo! Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Now the world can see you for what you truly are. A legend laid bare. 
powerless. Anyway, Scarecrow gets what he wants. The secret is out there. The world knows that Bruce Wayne is in fact Batman and hits him with a massive dose of toxin. This is the straw that broke the Batman's back. What are we waiting for? Let's get this done. No, no. We need to do this right. He needs to face justice. This son of a bitch killed 50 of all men. I say we finish him before he wakes up. He's too dangerous. We've got a hundred guns trained on him. He's going nowhere. We get a nice section where we get to see what Gotham will be like if Batman loses control to the Joker. It is pretty cool. And again, a lot of people die. Again, another section I wish they'd done more with Batman. Rather than just using the Joker model, they should have shown what Batman would actually look like. Like, he's still wearing the armor, but it's like purple and green. Like, why, why not do that? They did it with the Batmobile. Like, do it with Batman. It would have been cool to see. But unfortunately for the mind Joker, the toxin is so powerful that it's actually bringing out Joker's worst fear. But what is Joker afraid of? Well, Joker apparently is afraid of Harley hooking up with Enigma. What the fuck? <laughs> Bro, this would be an annoying ass baby. Could you imagine a squeaky, high-pitched voice spouting riddles at you? Oh my god. No, Joker's biggest fear is being forgotten. And this fear comes into play in this first-person section. Dude, this game is all over the place, man. This allows Batman to take back control from the Joker blood. And thanks to the Arkham Knight deciding to go all good now, I guess, we defeat Joker and put him behind bars. That's the end. Most of that was a cutscene. <laughs> There's no big bad boss fight. Oh, man. God, the story is bloated. It's so bloated for such a generic plot of just who is the Batman. It, ah, I didn't like it. To me, this was the weakest story in the series. And though I really like the mind Joker stuff, he is completely deus ex marking it away thanks to the power of batman's mind and the fear toxin it doesn't go anywhere after they're given a few visuals and keeping things a bit more entertaining throughout the story with just like the quips and again dark jokes <laughs> other than that it's <sighs> nothing well now that the secret's out batman decides to activate protocol 10 sorry nightfall protocol <laughs> too many protocols in a series but before we can do that, we have to clean up Gotham, which means the true ending is technically locked behind an 100% save file. That includes collecting the 200 plus Riddler trophies. Holy shit, this is frustrating. Whoever made this decision needs the Joker treatment. It's such a nothing ending. You, you don't feel satisfied. You don't feel like you've just overcome an obstacle. It, it kind of just feels like, ah, oh, all right, back to work then, I guess. You know, it's like working all week in your nine to five job, just, just praying to get home on Friday so you can have your weekend. And they're like, just as you're about to walk out the door, they ask, hey, can you come back tomorrow just to do a little bit of work? I take a couple of hours. Like, that's how it feels. Like, I'm not free yet. I now have to do this massive slog to get the break that I want, which is the ending. Anyway, once Gotham is squeaky clean, Bruce destroys the bat signal and heads home faking his own death. And also, I guess, Alfred's. We just saw Bruce Wayne, now known to be the masked vigilante Batman, enter his home, refusing to come. Gotham moves on, Gordon becomes mayor of the sea, and Robin and Barbara get married. And honestly, we get a cool ending scene with the new protector of Gotham, though. Who in their right mind would go down an alley next to a fear in Gotham? What the fuck? Take his wallet. <laughs> hey, freak! Maybe you missed the news! Batman's dead! That look don't scare us no more! So that's how Batman died, kinda. Wow. Well, before I dive into my thoughts, we do have a few DLC episodes to play through that were apparently worth £40 at launch as part of the season pass, so we'll take a look at those. All right, with the main story completed, we have some extra content released as expansion episodes that take place before and after Arkham Knight. First on the list is Harley Quinn's episode. This is set just before Arkham Knight with Harley working with the Penguin to free Ivy at Bloodhaven. 
this is actually really cool because you get to play as Harley Quinn for the first time. I like the little touches like she doesn't have silent in her vocabulary. So she does loud takedowns. It is pretty funny. Also, we can play as her original Harley Quinn designed costume. And my God, the developers cooked with this. My PC is overheating with the processing it requires for these jiggle physics. God damn. Unfortunately, it's pretty short. It lasts about 10 minutes. And then we move on to the next one. These are bite sized, just so you're aware. Next is Red Hood Story. This takes place after Arkham Knight, for obvious reasons, where he goes after Black Mask. He's fun to play as because he just shoots people. It seems like just using a gun is the most practical solution. Again, you do one stealth section, one fight section, and we're done. We're talking 10 minutes at most game time. I feel like the meat of these expansions is that you can play these characters in the challenge maps. Anyway, next is Batgirl, and this is probably the longest expansion, but also the most buggiest. Other than a few funny bugs with the fugs in my main story, I had a seamless run with Arkham Knight. But in this DLC, the frame rate takes a massive hit, especially at the start, and the game crashed three times. Like, I don't know what's going on with this expansion, but it is buggy as hell. Her story boils down to Barbara Gordon and Robin wanting to save the police force and her dad from the Joker, who's testing her and Robin, I guess, to see if they deserve the Batman mantle. Or maybe he's just jealous of Bruce spending all his time with the kids. I mean, it is Valentine's Day, so maybe he's just a lonely heart. Joker gets away, unfortunately, but dear God, this Harley costume does not quit. Run, Mr. J! Run! Holy shit. Next is Nightwing's mission that takes place after Arkham Knight and you just do a stealth section and then mess with the penguin. Super short, again, about five minutes. Ah, son of. Catwoman's expansion is a bit more meatier. Again, takes place after Arkham Knight and it has her breaking into Enigma's base while he's held at GCPD. She wants all his money. This is probably the hardest stealth section in any of the games so far and it's followed by this fight on this elevator which for the life of me, I could not figure out what I was doing wrong till it just randomly worked once. I think it's time-based and you have to defeat all the bots before the stage becomes completely electrified, but I have no idea. Thankfully, the Riddler is on the comms the whole time and he's actually pretty hilarious. He's trying to be menacing while also pretending he's talking to his lawyer on the phone. And you can hear Cash in the background getting pissed off. <laughs> it's brilliant. And considering I had to redo this fight like five times, it was welcome. My vengeance will combine the fury of Achilles with the patience of Prospero. You'll be looking over your shoulders so hard. That empty head of yours will unscrew and fall right off. Right You'll keep it down, nigga. Don't make me take away your chest. Uh, sorry, Officer Cash. My, but your hope looks particularly shiny today. Lastly is Robin's story, and it's him taking down Two-Face while on his honeymoon with Barbara Gordon. It's nice to see he's taken up the mantle from Batman after Arkham Knight, and having Oracle in his corner is nice, but again, this doesn't really add up to much more than a challenge map. It lasts about 10 minutes, and then we defeat Two-Face. So yeah, they're all about 10 minutes long, and I mean, not counting Batwomans that can go on for about 25 minutes, so it's a little bit longer. I don't know, man. It's nice to venture back to Arkham Knight for a few extra bits of content, but playing these back to back straight after the main game, it felt way more fillery than it should have, I think. And I feel like I would have been disappointed coming back after beating the game to play these when they launch a few months in between. So that's it for Batman Arkham Knight. And to be honest, the end of Rocksteady's win streak here, because the projects go quite downhill from now on. Arkham Knight has to be one of the most fun games in this series on a gameplay level. I actually found the combat and mechanics here far better than even Insomniac's Spider-Man games. And that's quite a feat. Unfortunately, it does fall into the same issues I had with Arkham City though. The main plot is such a nothing burger that doesn't go anywhere except with a twist with Jason Todd that, to be honest, they ruin halfway through the game. It's way too overly saturated with side missions and can kind of feel like just busy work at some points. Having my own personal Joker on my shoulder is the best part of this game by far. It keeps me going when the story starts to get a bit too dull. I, I find it crazy that people didn't like him being back in Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight gets so much right, but unfortunately it does fall to the bottom of my list out of these games. But that's in no way a bad thing. 
This is just me comparing the Arkham games between each other. As a video game, it is bloody brilliant in its own right. It's like going to several gourmet restaurants and ordering the most expensive steak on the menu. Yes, of course you'll have a favorite and least favorite, but at the end of the day, these are tasty ass gourmet steaks. If you haven't played any of the titles in the series, I honestly could not recommend them more. Each and every one of them. These games are honestly the sole reason we get games like Spider-Man and the soon Wolverine from Insomniac. The Arkham series did for games what Marvel's Iron Man did for the movies. It's a spark that we're still benefiting from to this day. Oh man, what a journey this has been. To think this retrospective was born for me just wanting to play Arkham Asylum after the rough launch of Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't planning on doing all the Arkham games, but I'm so happy that I did. To see my taste change so much since those games launched, it's super interesting and getting to hear your guys' opinions in the comment sections is truly fascinating. And finding out that I'm not alone on some of the more hot takes that I have on the series is pretty good. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always, to see who of you out there actually managed to stomach my disgustingly British tones for almost an hour, please put in the comments anywhere in the message, miss me. Miss me? <laughs> so I can pick out you legends in the comments section. Also, a massive thank you to those of you who have supported through Patreon. I would love to do this stuff full time, so if you could spare anything on that platform, it would be greatly beneficial to the channel, to me, and to the content I'm trying to pump out. I'm already super excited for the next project, and I'll be posting hints on the Patreon over the coming days, so you guys can find out early on there if you want. But that's it, that's the end of a massive project. And unfortunately, it's the end of the video. So guys, please stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time. Tie out.